So, Assalamualaikum and good morning everybody. So, today we're going to be looking at the first topic in our IEK 213, which is going to be covering principle of diffusion and mass transfer. So, these are four main uh, topics that we're going to cover and these are the outlines that we're going to cover. First of all, we look at the introduction of mass transfer. So, before you want to go deep and learn all the separation processes that involves mass transfer process, you must know the definition of mass transfer. How does it happen? Okay, what are the main components of mass transfer? And then we'll also be looking at the typical mass transfer operation, meaning that what kind of operation involves mass transfer? What are the processes that involves mass transfer? And then we'll be looking at diffusion and also mass transfer coefficient. Now diffusion and mass transfer coefficient is basically explaining how mass transfer happens or how to relate uh, the mass transfer processes. So these are the four uh, key important outlines when we are talking about principle of diffusion and mass transfer. So first of all, what is mass transfer? Okay, so most of the reference book available on the internet, available in the library, available in the bookstore, will say that mass transfer is defined by the net movement of a component in a mixture to another location with different concentration of it. Okay, so if you remember our heat transfer lesson, it is basically similar concept. In heat transfer, we say that uh, heat transfer from one system to another system. That it's a movement of heat energy from one system or one point to another point, one system to another system. So here is the same thing. It's the net movement, right? It's also moving. So moving from one direction to another direction, right? A, move, a net movement of a component. So when we say component here, you must understand that in order for mass transfer to happen, you must have at least two uh, chemicals or components. So for example, let's say we draw a beaker of water. Okay, so water here is one component. Okay, this one is component number one. So if you just have one component, then mass transfer can happen because you have to have a net movement of a component because this is already water. There's no other things inside this water. But if you add another thing here, let's say you add something like a um, material. So now this is your second component. Okay, so now you can have a net movement of a component in a mixture. So another keyword is here is a mixture. Mixture, it can be a mixture or it can be a solution. So you must be able to understand and identify the difference of mixture and solution. So how do we define whether this is a mixture or a solution? You must know the definition of a mixture and a solution. So net movement of a component in a mixture. So now we have two components, so we can say that this can be a mixture to another location with different concentration of it. So meaning that we can see here at this point, so I can label here at the top of the surface here, this is point A, and then maybe we can put here, this is point B, right? This is point B. So I can see here at point A, the concentration of my component number two is very high. Whereas at point B, the concentration is zero or very low. So that there will be a difference in concentration between point A and point B. So if there is a difference in concentration, there will be a movement of component two from point A to point B. So this is what we call mass transfer. And again, always remember that same as our heat transfer for heat transfer we say that it will happen from high temperature to low temperature this one also we say that it happens from high concentration to low concentration okay so that is the definition of mass transfer Okay, mass transfer can occur by two mechanisms. 
one is molecular diffusion okay and one is turbulent or eddy diffusion so what does it mean by molecular diffusion usually it is not moving okay so when we say for example this example i gave you it is the your components are not moving they are stationary right water is not moving your component number two is not moving the only thing happening is that how is it mass transfer is occurring by the movement the slow movement the diffusion of molecular the molecule of number two into molecule of number one whereas if you have turbulent or eddy diffusion there will be velocity involved so this one we'll look at even further after this now the another, another important thing that you need remember here is that when we talk about diffusion diffusion is the main mode of mass transfer now diffusion can be uh, modeled by two different models one is based on our diffusion coefficient and one is based on our mass transfer coefficient so if you looked at our outline just now and i explained that we're going to be looking at diffusion and mass transfer coefficient so that is why we're going to be looking at both of these components why because these are the two ways how mass transfer can occur so there will be equations related to diffusion uh, mass transfer and then we'll, there will also be equations involved and we are talking about the mass transfer coefficient now in mass transfer usually the main driving force for mass transfer to occur to for diffusion to occur is our concentration difference okay but sometimes other than concentration diffusion can also occur due to the difference of pressure temperature and external force so if we are saying that the driving force for our diffusion happening is temperature so we can call it thermal diffusion okay because it is happening because of our temperature okay but then if you have it happening because of any external forces we can call it force convection but the main usually will be the concentration difference okay so this is just an example on how our molecular diffusion can happen okay so first of all let's say you have a as we mentioned just now a mixture of a concentrated field of dye solution right so we can say that this is why you have a red dye here and then you add in water into it so what will happen first of all though you will see a clear difference between water and dye right and then after a while the water will start mixing with the dye and the dye will start mixing with the water so this is what we call a brownian motion a random movement of the molecule of water and dye until they become mixed together so this is basically how we can represent the other uh, molecular diffusion now i also found a video on youtube you can also find this so you can say that this is our first component right a beaker of empty uh, water if let's say we add in some dye solution right so if you see here let me just um, okay so if we add in dye solution here so you can see here at this point the dye solution has a very high concentration at this point only but at this point at the bottom of the beaker the dye has a very low concentration so naturally in order for the dye solution and water to be in equilibrium the what the dye molecule will be diffused will have a mass transfer process so that it can be transferred from high concentration area to low concentration right so we'll just continue the video so as time goes on the dye so this is basically what is happening is called molecular diffusion why because there is no external force helping this diffusion process if let's say you are stirring 
stirring this dye solution and water, then you can say that there is some external forces and there is a molecular diffusion plus with other type of diffusion, which is called convective diffusion. You can see here the dye is diffusing into the water solution. Okay, so if let's say you are at home. Okay, so if you want to try, you can take a, big, a glass of water or a beaker of water, a transparent glass of water. You can have it three types of water temperature. One is cold water temperature, one is hot water temperature, and what one is room temperature water. So you put in uh, maybe some dyes, uh, coloring dye, or food dye, or whatever material you have. You can see that there will be a difference in how fast the diffusion process happens. Why? Because we also we also mentioned that other than concentration, temperature and pressure can also affect the molecular diffusion. So you can, if you are if you are interested, if you are curious, either you can do your experiments in your house, or you can always search on YouTube and you can find a lot of different uh, people doing this experiment to show the effect of temperature on molecular diffusion.